Welcome back to CVN305. Our next major question, which is the topic of today's discussion, is what controls the beginning of loss of strength of a body? What I mean by that is, what starts the body to fail? So, we are going to do a very brief description of this thing. So, and then you can see how we decide whether something is going to fail or not. And the trick for that is the following. So, I have, so just to get us the idea of how this thing works and we will go through the process. So, I have some body which is subjected to some load. Okay. So, I have to know external loading. Okay. So, let us assume that the external loading is known. The next step to doing this is find, if you want to find, identify critical cross section where you think that failure is likely to occur. I might wonder how would you know this? This you can only know by experience. When we start out this process, we will have to try many cross sections to see if things work. As time goes on and as you get better and as you get cleverer, you will avoid the common mistakes and you will be able to identify the critical cross sections at which things happen. Okay. So, this is a matter of experience. Okay, then use equilibrium to find stresses on this cross section. Okay, so this is what it Either you know in our in our class we are going to do this by hand because most of the times the equilibrium equations are easy. If you have a very complicated loading for so let me write it down for easy loading of bars and beams, we can do it by hand. What I mean by that is we ourselves can do all the calculations. As the loading gets complicated, we might need computer. Okay. So then, what are we going to do? Find if stresses xc so let me write it down in a very careful way i'm going to write this in a fairly loose way right now if the magnitude of stress or amount of stress is above critical value. These critical values are identified, this is by experiment and this magnitude of stress we have to talk about. There are different ways of measuring the magnitude of stress and for different kinds of materials or different kinds of material behavior, you have to test different kinds of amounts of stress. Okay. If it is more than that, then you say it is going to it is going to fail on that cross section. If true, then it will fail on that cross section. Okay. So that's the idea. So if the magnitude of stress is too much, it will fail on that cross section. If the magnitude stress of, of stress is not is not that much, it will not fail on that cross section. Remember, face the force. So it's always something to do with a cross section. You cannot say that the 
object will not fail all you can say is that the cross section will not fail and then you will have to test for every cross section this is kind of awkward there are shortcuts around it which we will talk about okay so that's the basic idea so let's look at an example and we'll see how this works oh before we do that we will have to discuss what are the criteria so if the material has ductile behavior the criterion is based on amount of shear stress if the material has brittle behavior then criterion is based on amount of normal stress in general it is some function of the amount of shear stress and amount of normal stress okay so general case which is complicated will depend upon amount of shear stress and amount of normal stress and it, it can get very very quickly very complicated but these two extremes are useful enough for us to study okay so let's look at an example so that we understand how this thing works so example i have a steel bar cross section is 1 mm squared so this cross section is 1 mm squared applying a load of 100 newtons okay so i want to find out whether the cross section aa will it fail on the cross section aa well let's see what we have to do step 1 draw fbd and use equilibrium so i'm going to go like that 100 newtons that's 100 newtons right that's equilibrium the cross sectional area is 1 mm squared so stress sigma nn so this is n sigma nn is 100 over 1 which is 100 newton per mm squared which is called 100 mega pascals shear stress that's normal that shear and shear stress is 0 over 1 mm square remember that's the tangent direction there's no force so 0 over 100 mm 0 newton per mm square so steel under these conditions has ductile behavior and the tresca criterion the tresca criterion is a criterion developed by the french engineer tresca which says that ductile materials like steel
will fail on any surface on which the magnitude of shear stress is exceeds a critical value. This is called the maximum shear stress criterion and the criterion is very simple. For each surface you look at the shear stress and see if it is above a critical value. For steel typically and this is I am just I am just telling you, you have to actually measure it. When you measure it, it turns out that tau critical equals yield stress divided by 2. So, if you go look up the yield stress for steel, it will, it will be in the order of 90 or 100 mega pascals, 100 MPa divided by 2 approximately, which turns out to be, I am just giving you a very low value for steel by the way, this is mild steel or even, or even really poor quality steel, much better steels you can get even 800, 700, 600 mega pascals. So, right now I am giving you a very low quality steel. So, the critical shear stress is about 50 mega pascals. So, on any surface on which the critical stress shear stress exceeds 50 mega pascals, it is going to fail. So, on this surface, I look at the shear stress and it does not exceed 50 mega pascals. So, I am fine. Does that mean that the bar will not fail? The answer is no, because all it says is that on this surface. What happens if I, if it is in some other surface? Let us say I look at that one. So, let us say I look at it at some angle theta. So, that is the normal nose direction. If the nose direction is at some angle theta, what about on that surface? So, what I have to do is draw this free body diagram like that. So, this is 100 Newtons. This cross sectional area is 1 millimeter squared. This angle, because this angle is theta, uh, this angle will be 90 minus theta. Okay. The force, that is the normal. The force, because of equilibrium, this is 100 Newtons. This is equilibrium. So, which means that what I worry about is only the shear stress. That is what Tresca says. Tresca says, do not worry about normal stress, find out what is the shear stress. So, the shear stress sigma shear equals tangential force divided by face area. Remember, face the force. So, it is always face area, tangential force. In our case, the tangential force will turn out to be 100. So, this angle is theta. So, it is 100 sin theta divided by this area, this area, which will turn out to be 100, sorry, 1, 1 millimeter squared over cos theta. which will turn out to be 100 sin theta cos theta Newton per millimeter square. See, what I am trying to do is, I am trying to say, okay, look, you do not have to find for every angle. If you can find it as a function of theta, then you are done. And if you find it as a function of theta, then it is pretty easy. It will turn out to be 100 sin theta cos theta. So, if you plot this thing, you will find for different values of theta, you will get different things. For example, if theta equal to 0, you will see this is 0. Sig this is tau, which is shear stress. So, if theta equal to 0, it is 0. If theta equal to 90 degrees, it is also 0. Right? It actually reaches a maximum at theta equal to 45 degrees. So, if you plot this thing, it will look like this something like that. In fact, it is going to go like that. I am drawing it in a poor way. I will show you in a second. So, theta equal to 45 degrees is where it reaches maximum. 
So at theta equal to 45, tau max equals 100 times sine 45 times cos 45, which will turn out to be 50 megapascals. So what it means is that this material is going to fail at a 45 degree angle when the stress is reaches 50 megapascals because that's the yield stress and that's the failure stress. That's the failure shear stress. That makes sense to you? So this is the Tresca criteria. So if this material were a ductile material, this is what would happen. The, the thing is, we don't want to go on doing these calculations over and over and over again. Every time drawing a free body diagram for different angles and calculating gets to be really painful very fast. So next class, for the next lecture, I will show you how to do this in a quick way.